Okay, so uh, Lucas Kuna will finish our session by telling us about the realization space of a main Freud. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for sticking around for the last talk on Friday. I want to talk about matroids and arrangements. So the for me, for me, they appear as arrangement of hyperplanes. So here we see an arrangement of seven hyperplanes in three space cut out in this spherical picture. And for me, these arrangements are interesting for many reasons, and they can be studied for, through multiple perspectives. And one perspective is on the topology, the complement or the complexified topology, or the algebraic data associated with this. But let's focus for now on the combinatorics. So the combinatorial data of a matroid of this arrangement is governed by what's called a matroid. So we just look at these, I drew it as a point line incidence here on the right, where I draw a point for every plane, and I connect these points whenever I see that these planes meet in a line. So let's look, for instance, at the purple, yellow, red hyperplane, they meet in a line. That's why I connect the yellow, red, and purple line in this right diagram. So for this talk, it's enough to just think of matroids as these funny point line incidents we see on the right, and these are some of these the combinatorial abstraction of, of the um, arrangement of hyperplanes we see on the left. And these are central objects now in combinatorics and, for instance, uh, admit some hodge structures and, and sophisticated techniques. So the given such an arrangement, such a point line incidence on the right, we can also ask the question, where do they actually come from, this arrangement? And to talk about that, we what I call a realization is, if I can find such a picture we saw before, but I now I draw it as a matrix so, so that we can uh, work with it easier. And here again, I, I have this matrix where I label the columns by the color of my points. So I have one column for every point. And again, I connect these points whenever the minor of this uh, sub matrix, sub minor of this matrix is a rank two. So think of the, this being the uh, normal vectors to the hyperplanes that drew in the picture before. But there's a subtlety, namely let's, let's look at the um, red, pink, and blue point here. So that's this sub matrix is actually of rank two, uh, of rank three, only if and only if the characteristic of the field of the matrix is not equal to two. So meaning that this is a realization of this matroid over all fields except for the field of characteristic two. And now you can ask a question where can I always find such a matrix? And the answer is no, because here's the example of the so called non papos matroid. It's a configuration of nine points. So it's a matroid of size nine where I specifically left out that line in the middle and meaning that if it were realizable, it would violate the Pappos theorem because Pappos theorem tells us that whenever I draw such a configuration, these three intersection lines, as we see here, must line a line, must be collinear. And therefore a realization of that matrix would contradict Pappos theorem. And that's, that's why this is a example of such a mate, of, uh, for matrix which, which does not have any Realization. And this is just a shadow of a more general fact that anthotically almost all matroids actually do not come from, from algebra. And now there's a, we can now kind of extend this question by now not only asking, well, is it realizable, but what about the space of all realizations? And here in this kind of short talk, I just, excuse me for the experts, but just a hand wavy definition that I just want to call the realization space over a field of a matroid. Just a look at all the space of all these realization matrices of my matrix over this field. But there are two actions I can perform on that space. Namely, I can change coordinates of the space. And by changing the coordinates of, of my, of my um, space, does not change the way the columns of this matroid are independent or dependent. And in the same way, I can also scale the columns of this matrix by some non zero scale. And this will also not change the dependency among these columns. And I want to say that the realization space I consider is the quotient space of all these matrices more, uh, quotient up by these two actions I consider here. And that's exactly the space we seen in June's talk on Monday where he considered the uniform matrix. Um, so there are here some facts about this realization space. So it's <coughs> not just some set, but it's actually an affine scheme, meaning the set of prime ideas of some ring. And that coordinate ring can actually be computed. But the bad news is that this can be can get bad very quickly. There's a so-called Minesky universality law or Vakil's Murphy's law in algebraic geometry, which says that anything which can happen happens in some realization space. So any singularity you can imagine appears in some realization space of some <coughs> large of matrix. But even though that is known for quite some time, that only last year there was a first example of a concrete matroid of 
size 12 on three elements, which actually has a single levelization space and it's just similar because the space decomposes into these three components. So there are two lines and one conic and where these components intersect, there's a sing the space is singular. So we will come back to that example in the end. So now I say I want to come back to the point that it can be computed. <coughs> that's, that's not just a theoretical statement, but I want to show computations of how to compute it. And these computations are performed in OSCAR. OSCAR is a new computer algebra system currently developed. It stands for Open Source Computer Algebra Resource a Research, and it aims at combining existing packages such as GAP, Polymix, Singular, and Antic for group theory, discrete geometry, commutative algebra, and number theory. What is Antic? Antic, I think it stands for algorithmic number theory, and I see, I don't know, but I think it, it is developed for number theory. But this Oscar thing has a new module uh, for Matroids. It was developed by Dan Curry, Benjamin Schröter, and myself last year. And I want to show some computations in this module uh, pertaining to the realization space of a matroid. So the first example is the matroid we've seen before. This matroid actually is um, it's a prominent matroid. It's called the non fano matroid. And so if you ask about the realization space of the non fano matroid, the output looks like that. So the matroid up to permutation of the columns is the same matroid I showed you before. And it says in the integer ring, avoiding the zero low say of two. And so this means that we compute the validation space of all possible fields. And it's a validation as long as two is non zero. And that just means over all fields where two is non zero, meaning over all fields of characteristic non two. <laughs> There's a related matroid, so the, it's the final matroid, where we get a, a very similar matrix. But the output is kind of the opposite. It says, this is a realization within the vanishing set of the ideal two. So this means it's a realization as long as two is zero. And so this means it's a realization over all fields of characteristic two. So we can do more. Here's a, uh, the similar matrix to what we've seen before. It's the so-called Pappos matrix. Now I added the line in the middle. So it's a matrix on nine elements. And here they are, we see that we get some variables. It's a non-trivial space. It's two variables over C, so it's an affine plane, but we have to avoid a bunch of polynomials. So it's a, these are all polynomials we need to avoid. So it's a affine plane A2 minus a set of curves. And whenever I pick a point in A2, avoiding these finitely many curves, I have a point in my space. I can plug in the values into this matrix and all elements in this relation space are parameterized by this, in this matrix in that form. And then the matrix we've seen before, it confirms that this matrix is not realizable over any field. And it's the last example. I want to look at the affine geometry A23. So it's the affine plane over a finite field with three elements. And here we, so it's a, given by this picture, so we, it's a matrix on nine elements having 12 of these curvy lines. And here we see for the first time some non trivial non trivial equation, namely we see the equation x squared minus x plus one, meaning that we have a realization whenever we have a root of the polynomial x squared minus x plus one. So for most fields, we'll have two distinct roots of this polynomial, meaning that the realization space consists of two points uh, over that. Some of it is uh, redundant. If x one is zero, then the- Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, so this, this avoidance here uh, is redundant, you're right. I mean, yeah, if, if you're a root of this polynomial, then uh, you automatically also have, uh, have a non-zero. Yes. OK, so uh, in the last part, I'd like to look at two applications of these computations. For the first one, for whatever reason, let's look at this, make, this arrangement. It's the arrangement where the black lines form a regular k-gon. Here it's a seven-gon. And the blue lines are the lines of symmetry of that k-gon. But I drew that funny circle in the middle. And what that means is usually these blue lines would all meet in the center of this K-gon. But I would like to look at the arrangement where these blue lines are deformed in such a way that they all meet pairwise, not transversally. So they all meet every, every pair of blue lines meets in one point. And so they all meet at different points, not like in this picture where they would usually meet in, all, all, uh, in this one point. The way we do that is because then we get an interesting <laughs> regulation space. And we computed the realization space. And we found that for every K, this is a two dimensional space, so it's subsurface, it's singular. And for the example here, for the 
seven gone, we get this quartic equation. So this quartic equation may look a bit cryptic at first, but we computed its invariant. We found that it's actually a K3 surface, and it is a, a disguise of some algebraic right T, which is well known or studied in algebraic geometry, namely the elliptic modular surface. So the elliptic modular surface was introduced by Shiyoda in the 70s. It's not like psi 1k, and it's the modular space of triples E, P, T. So E is some elliptic curve, P is a point, point on that curve, and T is some generator of K torsion. So there's the K on that elliptic curve. So and that's the, the, the space psi 1t is then the compactification of all these uh, triples. And what we found is that the, mod the realization space of this funny K gon I just showed you is actually birational to the surface, meaning that you take these the K torsion, you look, you take all these uh, K generators uh, by starting a P and you do some this, uh, operation and then you get a realization of this matrix. And actually the, there's, this, this operate, there's an operator lambda, a geometric operator lambda on these line arrangements and the, we have a commutative diagram where the, the lambda on the level of the matroids corresponds to the multiplication by minus two on the level of the elliptic circle, of the elliptic curves. So that's a, somehow a, the matroid we just showed you on the on this kagons as some a combinatorial model for this uh, varieties from algebraic geometry. And what is this for k smaller k? Um, so for, for the smallest k in that series is for k with seven, it's exactly this matrix. Yeah, What's okay. the question? Okay. Yeah, what is the realization space? Ah, it's this this equate uh, this so like k plus like four. Ah, uh, no, no. So I, I think it only works from from seven on. And, 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 and something. And so that's the smallest example where which fits in in this uh, series. There are exceptional cases for five and six, but they there we have to do something else. Um. Okay, and the second example, I want to briefly talk about uh, a module of a module attached to the arrangement. As I said in the beginning, there for an arrangement there, you can look at the topology, the combinatorics. Here's an algebraic invariant of the module of the arrangement. There's a so-called module of logarithmic derivation. It doesn't matter what it is exactly, just think of it as related to the syzygies amongst the partial derivatives of the equation defining that module. And this module can be free or non-free, and if, if it's free, they call the arrangement a free. So nice cases for reflection arrangements, for instance, it's free, but if you take some generic arrangement, it will not, will not be free. And there's a long-standing conjecture by Terrell, which says that the ask whether the matroid, and like matroid, knows about the freeness of this arrangement. So meaning that if you have a realization space, you pick two points in that space, either both of them are free or not free. So the a counterexample would be finding some funny realization space where you would find a point where one is non-free and another one would be free. And so the, I wanted to look at the singular matroid again, I mentioned at the beginning. So there's a matroid by curry lieber on 12 elements. Its realization space has three components. So one conic and two lines. And we computed the module of, of all these different components and we found this module actually changes depending on where you are in the realization space. So on the conic, we have that type of minimal free solution. We have, uh, that's the module we're interested in. We have five generators and three relations amongst these generators. But if you are on one of the lines, this module is somehow simpler. You only need four generators and have only one syzygy amongst these relations. So the, they are all non free. So it's not a counter example, but it shows that somehow by looking at exotic examples and going to different components on the relation space, you can observe different behavior of that classically studied. So now I close with posing two questions. So I showed you in the first application um, certain class of varieties which can be modeled as realization space of matrix. And so there's a question for me is what other nice varieties are there which can also be might be modeled in terms of uh, realization space of matroids? And the other one, what are other matroids maybe which have some interesting realization space where there's some exotic behavior in certain points of the realization space, as we just um, observed in the in the case of the major uh, singular realization space. Thank you very much. Question.
um, in your first example or first application, um, do you understand why, like the, the relationship between the relation states, the matroid and the modular interpretation as like, you know, on the curves and so on? Like, is there an obvious correspondence between this thing in the realization space and this elliptic curve with this point? Uh, Does that make sense? In some sense, yes, because here you you have this um, k gone, and some of this looks a bit like the k torsion which we are looking at here. So here we're looking at this k torsion, and so this kind of morally should correspond to this k gone which we take in this realization space, and then we have uh, this operator which translates it something close to the blue lines and that's what we why we, we we see that yes but i mean but i don't have a general rule why this happens here but this is maybe some reason why why this happens here yeah. how can you see the elliptic uh, uh, uh yeah this is uh, uh you this you can't really see and not not easily there well not in the previous slide in the equation that you had can you not Fiber over one of the variables. Ah. Um, and I also maybe yeah. a question complementing her question. So what you did does work for larger k because then it's no longer k three, right? And it yeah, yeah, yeah. it stops being k. yeah, it stops being k three. But this is for general for every k. Okay. And it's only k three for seven and eight yeah, or so. Yeah. Okay, but it works well. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Oh. But yeah, the 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 equation becomes more complicated and the degree is higher. Yeah, yeah, you showed us some computations, and I was wondering about the algorithms behind the computation. Ah, okay. What do you use? Uh, okay, so the the we use Gruppner basis yeah. uh, mostly. So we kind of set up our general matrix, and then we having some dependency means that certain determinants need to vanish, and other determinants mm -hmm. must not vanish. And then we do some Gruppner basis computations and simplifications to get a So you results. can handle all the only very small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. you try to infer general. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you much about a matrix of size fifty or even like twenty. Or so it's, it's a... <clears throat> okay. Let's thank Lucas and all the speakers. <laughs>